ecoliving.com news 500 ways to make a yoga mat sandwich the controversial yoga mat chemical used to make subway sandwich bread has been discovered in nearly 500 items and more than 130 brands of bread stuffing pre-made sandwiches and snacks according to an analysis done by environmental working group EWG EWG researchers found azeodicarbonamide, ADA, an industrial chemical foaming agent in many well-known brands including Pillsbury, Sara Lee, ShopRite, Safeway, Smuckers, Fleshman's, Jimmy Dean, Kroger, Little Debbie, Tyson, Nature's Own, and Wonder, according to ingredient data obtained for a new food database project due out later this year. ADA is a synthetic substance used by plastic makers to generate tiny bubbles that make materials light, spongy, and strong. These materials show up in flip flongs yoga mats, and many types of foam, packing, and insulation. In 1956, a New Jersey pharmaceutical and engineering firm discovered ADA could be used as a dough conditioner to make bread that would rise higher, stay soft, and resilient and form an appealing crust. The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, approved its use as a food additive in 1962. Despite its 50-year-plus circulation into popular foods, the additive has not undergone extensive testing to determine its health effects on people. EWG is calling on food manufacturers to immediately end ADA use in food. The organization plans to launch an online campaign to raise public awareness of the widespread use of this chemical in food and to urge companies that have been using it to immediately drop it from their ingredients. Please visit the link I have posted in the video description for Eco Living ADA Foods to read this full article and to view a list of the foods and companies that are using ADA. It's a long list. EcoWatch.com GMOs ban them or label them. Since a controversial introduction in the mid-90s of genetically engineered food and crops and the subsequent fast-tracking of those crops by the federal government with no independent safety testing or labeling required, there has been a lively debate, debate among activists both inside and outside the U.S. and how to drive these unhealthy and environmentally destructive frankenfoods off the market. Some campaigners have called for an outright ban of GE crops. In fact, several do dozen nations, thousands of local governments in the EU, and six counties in the U.S., in California, Washington, and Hawaii, have created GMO free zones by passing bans. But food labeling alone cannot protect the environment or non-GMO and organic farmers from GE drift and seed contamination. This is why county and regional bans on GMO cultivation and the creation of regional GMO free zones are important. Between 1994 and 2012, the number of acres in the U.S. planted in GMO crops have grown significantly. Today, 169 million acres, almost half of all cultivated U.S. farmlands, are now growing GMO crops. But despite the proliferation of GMO crops, we are now seeing increased demand for non-GMO seeds. This is partly because farmers are growing frustrated with having to buy more and more pesticides and herbicides for GMO crops as weeds and pests grow increasingly resistant to products like Monsanto's Roundup. But it's also because organic and non-GMO farmers are speaking out about contamination of their crops by nearby GMO crops. Just this last week, a new survey published by Food and Water Watch revealed that a third of U.S. organic farmers report problems with contamination from nearby GMO crops, and over half of the farmers surveyed said they've had grain shipments rejected because of contamination. But food labeling alone cannot protect the environment or non-GMO and organic farmers from GE drift and seed contamination. This is why county and regional bans on GMO cultivation and the creation of regional GMO free zones are important. More than 80% of farmers surveyed by Food and Water said they were concerned about contamination, while 60% said they were very concerned. 
farmer said a lax U.S. Department of Agriculture has been exclusively influenced by the biotech industry. The largest food fight in history will soon intensify, throwing gasoline on the fire. GE companies are arrogantly and foolhardily attempting to introduce genetically engineered fish, apples, and Agent Orange herbicide-resistant corn and soy on the market, just at the time when human health and environmental concerns are escalating. These new Franken foods and crops will survive in the marketplace only if there's no mandatory labeling laws and no legitimate safety testing. Econews.com Breaking 400 youths arrested at White House protesting Keystone XL pipeline. Today more than 1,200 youths from across the country marched to the White House from Georgetown University where President Obama laid out his climate test to protect the Keystone XL pipeline. Once at the White House, 400 youths were arrested while participating in a nonviolent civil disobedience sit-in. This protest was the largest youth act of civil disobedience at the White House in a generation. The title of this article might as well read, Obama Hates Your Children. As a parent, I know how hard it can be to get our youth to realize they have a future and to care about the quality of their future. These youth should be rewarded for their courage, for stepping out to peacefully express their le legitimate concerns. Instead, Obama has them arrested for exercising the freedom of speech and conducting a well-organized legal protest. Where does Obama stop and insanity begin? I can't tell the difference anymore. As the fight to stop KXL enters its final stages, it's truly inspiring to see young people at the forefront, said Bill McKibben, founder of 350.org. This pipeline is scheduled to last 40 years, right through the prime of their lives. President Obama needs to look them in the face. The young people represented more than 50 colleges and universities taking action in solidarity with groups on the front lines of dirty energy expansion and climate impacts, such as First Nations and refining communities, ranchers and farmers along the route, and those fighting tar sands expansion in Michigan and beyond. These people who are willing to put themselves on the line are real heroes because our leaders do not understand the importance of this, said James Henson yesterday about XL dissent while speaking at the University of Oregon's Environmental Law Conference. For them to rule that there's no environmental impact is pure scientific garbage. Eco Business Apple CEO to climate-denying shareholders get out of stock. Yay for Apple, it's good to hear. The world's largest tech company has no use for shareholders who lack concern for the world around us. Apple CEO Tim said as much Friday in a blunt advisory to investors who questioned the company's decision to invest in renewable energy and establish environmentally conscious mandates. Get out of stock, he said Friday in response to an anti-environment proposal from the National Center for Public Policy Research, a Washington, D.C. Bay shareholder and think tank. We do a lot of things for reasons besides profit motive, the CEO said. We want to leave the world a better place than we found it. Hats off to Apple. They have earned my respect and support, something so few industries in today's world have. A reminder that there is still some good things happening in our world today. We just need to look hard enough to find them. Eco News again. U.S. to allow seismic air gun testing for offshore drilling exploration will threaten mar marine life. Yesterday, the U.S. government released a final proposal to allow the use of controversial seismic air guns to look for oil and gas deposits deep below the ocean floor in an area twice the size of California stretching from Delaware to Florida. According to the Department of the Interior, these dynamite-like blasts are expected to injure and possibly kill large numbers of dolphins and whales along the East Coast and disturb the necessary activities of millions more. By failing to consider relevant science, the Obama administration's decision could be a death sentence for many marine mammals and needlessly turning the Atlantic Ocean into a blast zone said Jacqueline Savitz, the Vice President for U.S. 
In its rush to finalize this proposal, the Obama administration is failing to consider the accumulative impacts of these repeated dynamite-like blasts will have on vital behaviors like mating, feeding, breeding, breathing, communicating, navigating. Uh, seismic air guns shoot extremely loud and repeated blasts of sound, each a hundred thousand times more intense than what one would experience if standing near a jet engine. The dynamite-like blasts occur every ten seconds for days to weeks at a time. These devices are loud enough to kill small animals like fish eggs and larvae at close ranges and can disrupt the behavior of large animals like whales and dolphins for up to a hundred miles away. It is as if Obama administration has learned nothing from the destructive destruction that similar testing has caused off the coasts of Namibia, Australia, and Madagascar. Oceania has delivered more than 100,000 petitions opposing seismic air guns to the director of the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council, as well as approximately 50 members of the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives also called on President Obama to stop the use of seismic air guns last year. A brief glance at Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, Benghazi, and Ukraine, to name a few, shows Obama has no use or regard for democratic procedures and will continue to ignore any laws in his way of promoting Obamacare, Muslim Brotherhood, and other more secretive special interests that he has not already rewritten with his magic pen. Obama was born in Kenya. His long-form birth certificate is a fraud. The nine pages used to make his fake birth certificate were not flattened before it was emailed. Thus, the document can still be easily edited by anyone. Obama is fraudulently elected. He should be immediately impeached, and every law he has changed should be automatically be reverted back to pre-Obama era. More eco news: Man risks arrest blocking road that leads Yellowstone bison to slaughter. Early this morning, Comfrey Jacobs, a 20-year-old citizen from Grand Junction, Colorado, concerned for wild bison, placed life, limb, and freedom on the line by blocking the access road to Yellowstone National Park Stevens Creek bison trap in hopes of preventing more of America's last wild migratory bison from being shipped to slaughter. To date, approximately 450 wild buffalo have been captured in Yellowstone National Park Stevens Creek bison trap located in the Gardiner Basin. Most of the buffalo have been and will be shipped to slaughter, while some are going to government research facilities. More than 200 bison have been shipped to slaughter, and 250 more have been killed by hunters. Jake has blocked the road to prevent livestock trailers from accessing the trap before wild bison could be loaded onto trailers des designated for slaughter facilities. He handcuffed himself to a hunter orange 55 gallon barrel filled with concrete and wire mesh webbing spanned the entrance to the roadway, which is closed to public access. Comfrey Jacobs' blockade included banners with the messages Hunters for Bison Habitat and Road Closed. Jacobs also included a list of demands for Yellowstone National Park. One, the immediate halt to all current and future capture and slaughter management actions and the release of all currently captive buffalo. Two, Yellowstone National Park's withdrawal from the interagency bison management plan due to its ineffectiveness in maintaining a wild free roaming bison population and not meeting the public's or buffalo's best interest. And three, so long as the Stevens Creek facility continues to be used to capture, torture, and ship wild bison to slaughter and research facilities, there needs to be public oversight and media access at all times to keep the Park Service accountable for its actions. The wild bison of Yellowstone are the most significant bison populations in the world, the last continuously wild bison to exist in their native habitat since prehistoric times. They are the direct descendants of the tens of millions that once thundered across North America. Currently wild migratory bison are ecologically extinct throughout their historic range with fewer than 4,200 4, existing in and around Yellowstone and temporarily in Montana. They are free of cattle genes and the only bison to hold their identity as wildlife species. North America's largest mammal, wild bison, are a keystone species critical to the health and integrity of grasslands and prairie ecosystems. 
We would like to thank Comfrey Jacobs for taking an action that our organization cannot, said Stephanie Say, a spokesman for the Buffalo Field Campaign. We have, have always strongly opposed the slaughter and abuse of wild buffalo and applaud nonviolent civil disobedience when other means of public participation have been exhausted and ignored. BFC shares Mr. Jacobs' goal for wild migratory buffalo populations that are respected and valued as native wildlife and free to roam and flourish beyond Yellowstone's border. In Montana and beyond, we hope his courageous actions inspire other patriotic Americans to stand up for this iconic and important national treasure. EcoWatch, again, PBS takes us on a terrifying post-apocalyptic tour inside Fukushima. Nuclear opponents are often criticized for using the term apocalypse to describe the triple meltdown, quadruple explosion, endless radiation gusher reality at Fukushima. But PBS has now penetrated where ordinary journalists may not tread. The interior of the most radioactive place on Earth, PBS reporter Miles O'Brien shows us for the first time some of the visual reality of what was actu what actually happened to a six reactor facility that has turned into a trillion dollar catastrophe. You can view the video on the EcoWatch site. I've, I've included a link below. Given the State Secrets Act batting Japan citizens from criticizing the government, O'Brien's footage may be the last we see inside Fukushima for quite some time. Despite 150,000 signatures delivered to the United Nations asking for a global takeover, Fukushima's builders and mismanagers remain firmly in charge. In fact, the cleanup has become a major profit center for TEPCO, which shows a multi-billion dollar windfall in 2013 while putting the entire planet in peril. One odd note, O'Brien shows footage. I hope you all know the Lord and your salvation is secure. If not, I can leave a link for that as well. Go with Jesus and go in peace. May God bless you till we meet again.